All right, and continuing with our discussion in AB class of some of the techniques or some of the problem solving that you'll need to do, we want to talk about the block and tackle. And there are times when you have to lift something that is an extraordinary weight or obviously heavier than we are. And we want to take advantage of our Marlin Spike class discussion with the block and tackle. And we need to actually calculate how much force we're going to apply in order to lift up a certain amount of weight. And we're, so what we're going to do on the whiteboard now is actually do this discussion and run the numbers so you can see just how effective this is. We very often want to lift up a thousand pounds or 500 pounds and we need to lift it up whether it's the end of a gangway, a 30 foot long gangway that we need to lift off the dock or a cargo on an unusual circumstance or maybe we want to drag something across the deck and we need to know uh, one, if we know how much it weighs, then we can figure out through the mechanical advantage that's created by the block and tackle, we can then pull it from one end to another. So let's get ready here and we'll run the numbers on the board. All right, so what I've drawn here on the board is, is I've wanted to uh, put up on the board a way of explaining this and showing it so that we can see the mechanical advantage and so what I've done is, is I've taken a typical block, and this is a, a double shiv block that I've drawn up on the board here with a shiv in each side. And so this is a double block. And we also have a double block here. Now I don't have the line rove through it, but we have the block. And underneath it, I put a block with a W in it, and that's representing weight. W represents our weight. In order to make this easier, I actually draw it out this way on the board. So let's move over to here and we see that I have the actual shivs and this way when I draw the line in it makes it easier to see how many parts of the falls I have and the mechanical advantage. So we're going to draw our little stick figure here and we're happy today and so we have our stick figure and that's us and we're going to be pulling on this block and tackle system so that we can lift up a certain amount of weight. So I'm, this line here represents the, the line that we're pulling on and it's going to go up through that shiv, down through and around through the next shiv. It's going to go up and over the next shiv and then come back around here and then it's going to be made off underneath. And what that looks like here is, is we've gone here, we've gone here, we've gone through there and gone up and then we're going to make it off on the becket that's on the bottom of this block. So this is one sort of two-dimensional look at it, and here's another. So this is what we have here, okay? So we have to have a formula, just like anything in math, we have a formula for this. And here's our formula, and what this says here is, is that the F equals W divided by MA. What does that represent? F is force. That's the force that we apply going back over here with our hands, okay? Now, this could be just human power, or it could also be a winch that you might have on deck, whether it's a capstan or an anchor winch or a tow winch, anything that applies energy. So that's the force applied. Now we go back over to our formula here, and we have W. That's the weight. That's the weight that we're going to pick up, and that's what I put here, okay? We're going to divide that weight by what is known as the mechanical advantage, okay? So what is this, this term mechanical advantage? Well, that's where the, the block and tackle come in, in that by roving this line through these shivs, we create what we call a purchase or a mechanical advantage, okay? So let's run the numbers and see what that what happens there. Now, if we did not have mechanical advantage, this is what would happen. If we had a simple situation where I tried to lift up a certain amount of weight and here I am applying this force, okay, when I pull on this line, whatever this weight is, and if it's a hundred pounds, okay, if I don't have any kind of a mechanical advantage and all I'm doing is redirecting my pulling force like it's represented here, then I'm going to have to pull at theoretically a hundred pounds. I'm going to have to pull at a hundred pounds rate in order to pick up that weight. By creating this multi-purchase system here with a block and tackle, I don't have to pull as much. 
So let's look at this and see what this might be. So let's just throw in some numbers here. We're going to say that this weight that we're going to lift is 500 pounds, okay? So we've got 500 pounds of weight, okay? And we are looking for what is that force, okay? So let's go back to our formula, and we're going to fill in what we know. We always do this with math formulas. Let's fill in what we know. Now we're looking for F, okay? That's what we're looking for. And we have the weight, and that's 500 pounds. Now the next thing we need is this mechanical advantage. Now there's a rule that we have in, in formulating this number in working with a block and tackle is that in order to establish what the mechanical advantage is, the rule is, is that we need to count how many falls there are or how many sections of line there are at what we call the movable block. Now, in any block and tackle system, there are two types of blocks. There is a movable block, and then there is the stationary or the fixed, okay? And when I pull on this line, one of these blocks has to be affixed either to the deck or to the overhead on our ship, okay? The other one is the one that's actually going to get closer and closer to the other block when I pull on this line. So as I pull on this line with my hands, this weight is going to have to move because of the line being shortened up through the block and tackle system. This one is fixed and this one is movable. So going back to our rule, we're going to take the mechanical advantage, is going to be established or we're going to figure it out by counting how many lines are at the movable block right here. So we have one, two, three, four parts of line are at the movable block. So that's our mechanical advantage, it's four, okay? So we're gonna write it here, we'll keep it green just for color. And so that, now we have the ability to do a basic simple math formula, is we're gonna take 500 pounds and we're going to divide it by four. Now, those of you who can do this in your head, uh, we can do that in our head, uh, or we can simply take our calculator, if we're of the calculator age, and we're going to punch in 500, we're going to divide that by the number four, and we're going to hit equals, okay? Now, if you did it in your head, you would have come out with 125, but when I divided 500 by four, I came out with 125 pounds, okay, represented by the pound sign. For those of you who uh, don't have gray hair, that's hashtag, whole different meaning in today's world. But what we have here is F. F is the force. The, the amount of force I have to apply or to pull, okay, is going to be 125 pounds. So what you see here is, is that I have... I don't have to pull it 500 pounds, I only have to pull it 125 pounds and through the mechanical advantage of the block and tackle system, I'm able to pick up that 500 pounds, okay? Um, whereas here, because I had no mechanical advantage, essentially it's one to one, all right? So that is the system, this is the formula um, that is fairly generic in mind when it comes to picking up a certain amount of weight and being able to move it a very heavy object with not a, not a whole lot of force, okay? And this is called force equals weight divided by mechanical advantage. Now the one issue with this is, is that it's theoretical in that we're not compensating for a very well-known uh, scientific problem, which is friction. Remember, these shivs that are inside this block that we talked about uh, in Marlin Spike class, okay, has a pin going through here. And these things actually rotate around a pin. Now this can be stainless steel, it can be bronze, it can be brass, it can be any number of metals, but this shiv rotates around this pin. And naturally there's going to be a friction in, involved here. Now sometimes that friction can be very reduced because we might have a greased ball bearing system in there or it's just simply uh, a shiv uh, sitting on 
a brass shaft, let's say. So there's going to be some sort of friction there. And then there's just the weight of this 500 pounds on these shivs and these pins. So we do have to account for friction in, in reality. So that's what we're going to calculate next. We're going to calculate really what is the, the realistic calculation here instead of the theoretical calculation. And we'll do that next. Mm hmm.